Hi there! And now you're wondering what is a MUTO Scriber ET203? Well, watch the video and you will know. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see more. Okay, and here we are. That's the MUTO Scriber. And um, just in case you don't know the brand MUTO, um, it's a printer manufacturer that still exists. They make now really large format printers for professionals. And uh, back in the 90s, they made this thing here. And the same thing was sold under a couple of names. Uh, for example, the German company Rotring had something similar, not exactly the same, but um, it's a little bit difficult to find manuals for this thing. Um, well, no, it's in fact very easy because uh, you can buy them on eBay uh, as, a, as a paper manual. But uh, a downloadable PDF, I think that's just before the internet and therefore it's a bit difficult. I found one in French and I was able to find out most of the features here. And, uh, well, let's have a look at it and take it apart. Okay, so first of all, it seems a little bit useless because you can type characters and then it writes it to the paper. Uh, this device was designed for uh, professional drawers, uh, technical drawings. Here with this bracket you can attach it to a drawing board, to this mechanism. And uh, it's basically an electronic stencil, so it makes, it writes perfectly in DIN, the DIN uh, norm uh, writing or norm uh, fonts. It has seven different fonts. I can show you them right here. I already tried it with a black. Uh, marker. I only have a green marker here. Uh, I forgot the black one uh, at work. So it has the uh, different ISO and DIN uh, fonts. Uh, it has this universal font. It has an outline and a block font. Well, the difference is the outline is just outline and block is filled. And you can have it in all kind of sizes. Uh, 10 is not the maximum. Maximum is about 20 millimeters or something like that. You can make circles, you can draw lines, you can even make some uh, measurement lines. Let me see if I can do that. Now it's free line. I want the other one. Uh, let me see. We need the uh, dimensions, okay, what does, we have only free and dimensions, okay, we take that, enter, uh, no, that's not, okay, yes, ah, okay, I have to, okay, now, so it's the fashion or the kind of uh, line number one, you can have arrows or dots or uh, other things at the end. Then we give the length, let's say 50 millimeters. Oh, wrong. Okay, again, length 50 millimeters. And uh, that's the text that goes above the line. So we take 52. It's a ratio one to one drawing. And when we do that, we press enter and it does exactly what we programmed. I just noticed that the font is a little bit big. So let me see. So that's the result. For the lazy drawing man that wants to take shortcuts. Well, it makes life a little bit simpler, especially 
with uh, lettering because the only way to do that by hand is using an actual stencil and this thing is certainly a bit faster. We can also do circles. Let me see. Mode 3, that's the graphic characters here. We can enclose a text, for example, play with... Oh, no, 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 no. How do I clear that? Okay. Uh, I need mode 1 for large letters. Play with junk. Uh, and it... Calc oh, you can't see that. And then it calculates the circumference of, uh, no, the diameter of this circle uh, according to the text, the text size and the number of letters. And then I press enter and it positions itself and enter again. And it does this one. You can also position it manually with the arrow keys, which is extremely slow, so you better move the entire machine. And it has a lot of different other features, but I don't want to show you everything that would be boring. I just removed four screws on the bottom side, and that's everything you need to remove this cover here, which is very very yellow so that's the original color here interestingly the bottom side the bottom half is not yellowed so that must be a different material because i'm pretty sure top and bottom half have been in the same place all the time we got a rubber keyboard like we as we know from calculators And we have a large PCB. We have two stepper motors, one for the X axis and the other one for the Y axis that works with a string with a steel wire or steel rope. Let me zoom in and take the board out. One moment, please. By the way, I saw a video on uh, YouTube with a guy that replaced this whole uh, electronics. So he took the stepper motors here and uh, put an Arduino inside and used the mechanic to uh, actually print something from his computer. So this thing is fully capable of creating graphics. And we can lay that to the side. Okay, what do we have? So we have, I guess that's the stepper motor drivers, probably two per motor. So yes, all the traces go to this stepper motor. There's a little uh, hall sensor. I think somewhere, yes, there is a, a magnet on the, on the arm that uh, it uses that to find the home position of the movable arm. We have something that I don't know what that is. Maybe it has to do with the keyboard, maybe it has to do with the stepper motor. I don't know. So that's clearly a beeper, right? Yeah. Uh, that's a battery. And I'm really surprised this thing is from 1990 or maybe 1992, three, something like that. This battery is still good. So uh, you can program your own text, you can save them, and it still keeps my programmed save text and no problem. Battery. It's a 3 volt lithium battery and it currently has. 2.9 volts, so it's perfectly fine. Will work for another decade or so, I don't know. Then we have 
one of them is the actual microprocessor i think that one and that may be the display driver no that's on here is the eprom yes that's the eprom here uh, the display has its own driver on the display board and i think that one could be the nvram or maybe that's the um, the non volatile ram battery buffered and that's the processor yeah something like that if you like you can google the part numbers here if you can read it i think yes that should be possible and now let's check the mechanical part i think that's the more interesting one so you see there is a belt a, a tooth belt here that goes to that motor and the other motor drives this steel wire here that drives the y-axis of this uh, uh, holder and then we have a solenoid here that simply lets that hold the thing down and then the pen uh, rests on the paper and you draw the line and then it lifts up and continues with the next letter here you can see the action of the solenoid that drops the pen to the paper it only moves this bar here where this arm just rests on drops it down lifts it up so the pen uh, actually sits on the paper by its own weight plus a little bit of weight by this arm here and of course there is a little spring here that pushes the arm also a little bit down because sometimes you write well nearly on a vertical plane so that must work too and the rope mechanism is really interesting so the rope goes around the motor here a couple of times goes here up here over this wheel back to the other side around then there is another wheel on this side and it goes back to the motor and it works like this a little bit a little bit like a crane you can probably see the second wheel there and of course because the rope goes goes on both sides of the arm when we move it that way it doesn't move in the y-axis because it rolls around on both sides yeah it's a little bit difficult to explain in words but i think you can see how it works so we still have a little bit of dust in here and uh, I like the sound this thing makes. Let's see, every time when I turn it on, it uh, goes to the home position and calibrates itself. Just listen to that. So let me try another uh, sound demo command i choose a bigger font so let's go for oh no that's too much 15 millimeters that's pretty big and uh,
you may notice, especially round characters like circles and so, make a, a little bit of music and I think that sounds pretty nice. Before I forget, uh, the bottom side is also quite interesting. For example, for example, here are the stepper motors. and They are not just screwed into the plastic, no, they actually took uh, knots on the on the side on the bottom side here of this case so that's very stable that never breaks that works forever and also the attachment here for the drawing arm is relatively massive yeah I think that's a well-built thing and that's probably the reason why it's still working although it was tossed into the electronic garbage, which is actually a shame. Now the question is, what can I do with it? Well, I think it, doesn't, it does not only write on paper, it also writes on a power supply. So I can label stuff, I can even draw a, a rectangle around it. I can label a front panel of something or I can mark my possessions. For example, my, I don't know, my iPad on the back side. I write my name in wonderful, perfect letters. I mean, this uh, ink here is waterproof. And I also ordered some uh, China ink uh, pens, a set of, and uh, that China ink is also waterproof, light proof, and yeah, I don't know. Maybe you will see that later in another video as a gadget to, I don't know, label stuff, write numbers on, uh, on whatever. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.